welcome to the one. Welcome to the Comics Who Show. I'm your co-host Patrick Lugo, and with me is co-host Curtis Vegeta. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Comics Who Show, where we stand a bit shakily at the crossroads of comics, kung fu, and pop culture of all sorts. Um, your co-host Patrick Lugo, and uh, also Curtis. known. Damn it! I still haven't gotten that yet. Also known as Plugo, with my co-host Curtis Fujita. Exactly. Give, give us a couple weeks off from our, our our Kickstarter campaigns. We're still kind of our head style kind of spinning, so we're getting we're getting back on track. But I think I know. Or, or or we're off. We're even further off the rails. You exactly. decide. Put that in the comments. Exactly. So I'm I'm, I'm Curtis Fujita, a comic book creator, kung fu instructor. My comic book is called Shadow Ghost, the kung fu comic by a kung fu master, successfully crowdfunded on Kickstarter last month. And approaching fulfillment. And Patrick, why don't you feel free to let everybody know a little bit about yourself? I'm uh, Patrick Lugo, author, illustrator, comic creator. Um, slowly putting my consciousness back together or still letting it fall apart. Um, on this rainy Pacific morning, it's still springtime in California and it's pouring rain. How is it on in SoCal, Curtis? It's, it's about the same. It looks like the sun's kind of peeking out, but it'll, it'll probably duck back uh, into the clouds shortly. And Story Comic is already here in the chat saying, I've been waiting all day for this show. Barney Smith, uh, excellent interviewer, uh, good friend, author of the book Dad Jokes, which you should check. Barney, throw us a dad joke. I saw one you did the other day. And ooh. anyway, um, that said, we're excited to be, I'm excited to be back after yeah. some some time, you know, looking at spreadsheets and whatnot. Definitely. Um, I, f I forgot to mention that uh, Tiger's Tale Volume 1 and 2 was also successfully funded, right? Uh, 192%, I think. Mm -hmm. So pretty good, kind of fun. And so in the myth, I just uh, sent out a, the one-week notice for my backers to fill out their survey. We're at 75% of my surveys filled out. They have a week to... Uh, get that other 25 in. But you know, Curtis, you may not know this, but it seems to me that there's always a few, uh, you know, stragglers that never quite fill out their survey. So it's, uh, you know, margins, right? Definitely, definitely. Well, speaking of Kickstarter campaigns, and I would say we have our, our, our guest, first time on the show, but I probably will be many times on the show, we hope. And definitely a kindred spirit, as, as Patrick says, we, we stand at the intersections of comic books, kung fu, and pop culture. And uh, the creator that we're about to bring onto the show is a perfect example of that. Uh, she is a comic book writer, a fellow martial artist, a stunts person, a writer, and uh, the creator of the current campaign sensation on Kickstarter, the Path of the Pale Rider, issue number three. Please welcome to the show, Lori Calcaterra. Lori, welcome to the show. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me on the show. So excited to be here. <laughs> uh, no, I know. We were on your show, and now we're... Yeah. You know, I know. I, I haven't seen you guys since the Kickstarter. We've kind of chatted, but I was like, oh, I get to hang out with you guys again. I'm so lucky. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Definitely. I was, I was just telling a friend that as you're watching our last season of uh, the Kong's Fu Show, at each episode, you can see Patrick and I aging each time we had an episode as the campaign went on, right? You, you're, you're, you're familiar with campaigns. This is, this is the third one for your. For your yeah. Uh, it's a marathon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Not a sprint people. It's a marathon when you run a Kickstarter because you try and do interviews and shows throughout the whole campaign. So you're hitting, you know, new audiences, the same audience they can see you, but it's like, it's a lot <laughs> Four weeks just to be like, hi, it's me. And we're talking about the same thing 12,000 times. But I mean, if you like what you do, like we do, then it's really not a burden. It's just like, oh, I get to talk about my comic again. Hooray. <laughs> and the one thing that I'm meditating on these days is that that marathon isn't just 30 days. It's like about yeah. a 60 to a 70 day marathon because there's the crunch time just before. Yep. There's the launch where you are at now, and then there's that that 
quiet, crazy time after the campaign where Curtis and I reside currently. There's of the just, plateau in the middle where nobody looks at your campaign and you're like, where what's going on? <laughs> oh yeah, yes, <laughs> yeah. Him, by the way. Yeah. Oh, and he has a his joke. Here's his here's his yeah. joke. So what's the difference between a camera and a sock? One takes photos, the other has five toes. <laughs> so, you know. Nice. Bravo. Very, very, very good. You get a golf club. Bar I know. Barney, your, your dad foo is mighty. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. <laughs> awesome. Well, maybe we'll, I was thinking we'll start, maybe we'll talk a little bit about yourself and then, you know, your project and we'll go into, you know, all the nitty gritty of that. But, but. Yeah. Tell, tell everybody a little bit about yourself and, and how, you know, your background in martial arts, your background in Korean comic books, how all that came together. You know, it's a funny story because my martial art career actually led to my comic book career, nice. which doesn't usually, I mean, you guys understand that, but most people do not. Mm -hmm. They're like, how does that even work? So I started training martial arts in 1997. Thank you, Barney. Oh, Sorry. Oh, like, no, no, no. Yay. Excellent. <laughs> so, so I started training um, Penchak Sea Lot back in 1997 in a little school in a strip mall called King Dragon Martial Arts, right? We all know what those places look like. Yeah. Um, and I, I just fell in love with, I've, I've always wanted to do martial arts ever since I was a wee child, you know, watching Power Rangers on the TV. I wanted to do it, right? Um, Penchak Sila and weapons-based martial arts really appealed to me as a woman because I'm shorter, I'm smaller frame, you know what I mean? Like, so when we're empty handed, you guys have a longer reach, you have more muscle, you know, I'm at a disadvantage, but as soon as you put a knife in my hand, you know, we're equals. So that's what really appealed to me. So I, I studied Arnis, I've studied uh, Pekiti Tersha. Um, San Miguel Escrima. Um, there's a lot of Filipino and Indonesian martial arts that are very um, weapons heavy. So I enjoy all of that. Um, in about 2017, I met a group called Coattail Collective, and they are a production company in Detroit. Um, and they were looking for someone to be an extra in a music video. One of their hip hop artists was producing a music video called I'm, I'm like Bruce Lee or I am Bruce Lee. I forget. So he was a martial art um, fan as well, but with no training. Right. And so when I introduced myself, I was like, I could be an extra, but what I can also bring to the table is other people who actually can do these things. We can choreograph the fight scenes and we can be your additional stunt people. And that's how our relationship started. So we were choreographing, we were um, filling in for when they needed talent um, we were uh, training the talent um, short term, long term, just depending on how skilled they need to look on camera, like how to fake it, how to fake a fall, that kind of stuff. It's like not really hurting yourself, <laughs> which people need to know how to do. Um, so we we produced uh, some short films. Um, my team and I did like a, a it's like a video resume called Catfishing. It's a seven minute long fight it's all it is there's like very little plot and like we do talk but it's terrible acting so don't judge me on that that's not what it was intent like it's not an actor's reel but we do like a stair run and we do some um knife fighting um we do some takedowns i do a flying takedown there's an additional fight and then i run someone over with a car like you know what i mean it's it was a lot of fun but that's kind of my first foray into writing mm -hmm. and it, like i said it wasn't really um, story heavy. It was just like, okay, we're going to beat the crap out of each other for seven minutes. But the production company was like, we like what you can do. Have you thought about doing more? And I was like, no, but I can. So I started writing web content for them. And again, still very action heavy. Um, it was a sequential, I think I wrote two seasons. There were six episodes each of a spy drama called The Agency. And we actually, we started filming uh, the pilot, but it was like right around the time we needed to do reshoots, my my family relocated to Texas. So that whole project came to a stop. Um, but I have, I have, still have the script. Like that would be a great comic book series right there. Um, so I had kind of getting, I got that writing bug, right? That I could, that I could do it. 
And I got this crazy idea of what would happen if death no longer worked anymore. And just spent a lot of time building the world, exploring the rules. Oh, no, you put me on. <laughs> <laughs> this is the hard sell. Go for it. Okay, okay. So in this world, death has been broken, right? So your body can die, but your soul, your consciousness, it doesn't leave your body upon death. So you're still you in, an, in a decomposing body. Um, which makes it difficult because your brain is literally rotting in your skull. So even though you're you, um, you become forgetful, you become violent, you become detached. Um, it's, we mimic the, uh, like a brain disorder, like an Alzheimer's or dementia, but in fast forward. Okay. And it hits everybody differently. So people, animals, insects, fish, nothing, nothing can die correctly anymore. Um, so it creates a whole gamut of problems. We have overpopulation. Um, we have a problem with food uh, because, again, animals, the same thing. You may kill it, but it's still moving. So this cow doesn't really want to be butchered. <laughs> and, <laughs> and your hamburger will still move as you're trying to eat it. That's awesome. It's gross. So <laughs> the other problem is, is with insects where – they really only do like two, three, two things really well, right? And eating is one of them. So they're kind of stupid. And if they're undead, they might continue to eat things even though they don't really have to. And pesticides no longer work. So again, we're having issues with food, water. Um, and then we start having ethical problems because these undead people are still themselves. But how long do they get to continue having rights? How long can they own property? How long can they vote? Can they have firearms and drive? See what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, it can create all sorts of issues. Uh, so we deal with that in the story. Um, things get really, really crazy. But when we start, when we started the story in issue number one, we're already 10 years into the apocalypse and we're following a cowboy. Things have devolved back to the Wild West and it's a hard place to be. He's living on his horse. And he's like the last guy still looking for the answer to the question, why did the dead no longer die? Mm -hmm. um, so you get to see him in the wild and like really understand consequences in this world where it's like if you make just a wrong decision, minor decision can have huge consequences to what, what you do. Um, issue two, we went to this town called Santa Claus. I think it's really funny. Um, and he got to, to meet like living people and it's very much a Western. So there's a saloon. We have a poker game. We got a saloon brawl. You find out more what he's looking for or who he's looking for. And then uh, we dump you into issue three. Uh, I don't want to give any spoilers what happens at the end of issue two or at the end of issue one. Like, you guys got to read that. Um, <laughs> if you throw the comic, you will not be by yourself. Because usually when people get to the end of my issue, they're like, come on. Like, really, Lori? But I, I thrive on that. Like, yes. That's, that's great. Well, it looks like you're, you're sitting pretty strong. I mean, it's only been how, how long? 24 hours, if that? It's, it's less than 20. We launched at like 6 p.m., uh -huh. 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Wow. So this evening, yeah, we'll be 24 hours and we're about 80 something percent. Okay. 85, thanks to Barney. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the math, right? So yeah, um, it took off this time. That's so great. That's um, awesome. I'm humbled and, and so grateful for everybody who came out. And, um, yeah, I just, I've been sitting there for the last less than 24, but just going like, wow, wow. Thank you, people. Thank you. That's wow. great. Well, you know, what, what I'm thinking, and I don't know, Patrick, what do you think, but I think, you know, because I want to make sure we get through everything on the Kickstarter. And I think we can kind of use that as kind of a, a venue to kind of go over things and ask questions about Lori and her career and all that. And then we can kind of kill two birds with one stone because, um, mm -hmm. Let me see. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and switch it to my my view, and I'll just we'll just kind of scroll okay. through. Does that, does that sound good? Go for it. Let's 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 do that. Uh, let me. Yeah, I mean, it's just I just love the chance that you know we jumped straight into you know we went from to my mind we went from from our niece a screamer to path of the pale rider in life. <laughs> it's it's, it's awesome, awesome because it's like it's all one thing. Right. Because when I'm writing this, it's like my martial art experience, my production experience, my love of Westerns and horror and science fiction. It's all in there. So if you like any of those things, it's a wild ride, guys. 
That's excellent. Well, let, let's let let let's let's take a look at it. Um, let's, let's <laughs> first. And I love I love the the world building. You know, it's not just uh, like a index or appendices or so like that. You're actually doing things to create the world, to create the environment, right? Yes, we uh, cosplay. I've done photo shoots. We're doing. Um, additional content besides the comics. So you can actually participate in the world with the, you, we'll talk about the riddles. And then I do fan interactive short films for every issue. So you'll see like stuff where you can participate, the fans participate. And sometimes it's a thought experiment. Like I'll just, get, I'll pose a question like, what do you think broke death? And they can say whatever they want. So we have a fun time. That's but great. Yeah, you can actually like participate with the world. You can interact with it like it's real. That's excellent. That's so exciting. It's, uh, it's like a, a meta campaign, you know, which exactly. you're creating. The story exists outside of just the one piece of medium, in this case, issue three. But the story itself is bigger than that. It's it's what's happening right. in the videos. And Definitely. And I just want to mention to everybody watching, and, and look, you know, Lori's a pro at this, so this is great. But just because it says issue three, don't feel that you can't jump on the bandwagon and get the whole story because as add-ons and other things, you can catch up. So so in a way, this is actually for issue one, two, and three. So, you know, rest assured, you can get the full story up to now. Uh, you're not late, late to the game. So um, maybe you can tell us a bit about, about your team. So this is Marco. And this is Marco DeFillo. Um, he's our head of art department. So basically everything runs through him. It was him and I when we first started. And uh, we're now bringing more people onto the team, which is super exciting. But Marco does the interiors of the comic. He does all the pencils and inks. Um, he really breathes life into this comic. And one of the best compliments I have ever heard about his art is that if I took all the lettering out, you would still understand exactly what's happening in this story just with Marco's art. It's amazing. Okay. That's excellent. Um, issue one we did in black and white. Issue two we did in color when Marco mm -hmm. colored. And uh, it's a big difference. Like you can just see, you know, the, it just breathes so much more into the story. So amazing artist. He graduated with a BFA from Kansas City Institute of Art in 2020. Um, he's a little bit younger than I am. So he's like really a, a, a fan of anime, but still loves like sci-fi and apocalypse and the, so we, we see the world the same way, which is so important, you mm -hmm. know? Definitely. And then Dude. here we have. <laughs> it's funny. Like when you go to the pages and you look at the background. So uh -huh. of course I'm writing the script and I'm telling like the main story, but he'll go in and he'll add all these little details that are hilarious. Like he put a singing bass on the wall in <laughs> issue number two and like a toilet up a tree and like. Um, we're both from Texas. So there's like the Texas guy that's leaning with the leg up and the hat now. It's mm -hmm. so funny to look around and see what Marco puts in there. So that's, that's great. It's gotta be exciting for you as a creator, right? Is to, you, yeah. you kind of set the pace and then you see what they take and run with it. Right. Yeah, absolutely. He adds so much more to the story. And a lot of times he'll see things that where I'm lacking. Cause one of the things he was like, man, Lori, you're writing all these characters, but they're all men. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, but I kill most of them. Like, <laughs> like they're just, they're throwaway characters. Uh, and he was like, well, I'm going to change some of them to women. I'm like, that's cool. Like, well, we're, you know, he's diversifying my story just because he's like, this is boring if it's just a bunch of dudes. And I'm like, you're right. He's right. Right. Definitely. So <laughs> I was like, but now we have to kill off all these ladies too. Sorry. <laughs> uh, this is Marta. Uh -huh. Marta Gasparoni. Um, uh, again, very talented artist. She was recommended to me by, a, um, uh, my brain just stopped working. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan George is his name. And, uh, he writes a Western series as well, which Marta colors. So when we were looking to bring on a colorist, um, and it's not that Marco isn't a good colorist. It's just that we needed to, um, go a little quicker. Marco was getting yeah. very busy. Um, with a lot of projects because he's very good. So he's getting, he's getting attention. And of course he's bringing on other projects. So it's like, okay, at this point we need another person to help us continue our pace. Uh, Marta was uh, fit our style. Um, Marco and I looked at about four different candidates and they were all very good. Uh, Marta's style just matched what we had already done in issue number two. So I'm super happy. She's coloring the um, preview pages. So when you see our preview pages in black and white, she's working on them right now. 
which is really cool. I'm excited about that. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And then this is kind of a little bit of the, the story you were talking about. Yep. And, um, and I love this character's and I saw this on, on your, on your yeah. social media. That is a cool character. So it's yeah. very Western. Um, he kind of resembles Clint Eastwood. He does a lot of the eye squints that you see in the Westerns. Mm -hmm. um, but he's still like, there's some new technology. There's, if you look at him, he's like a road warrior. He has random armor, you know, not even matching. It's like he has a shoulder and a knee pad, but he doesn't have anything else. Um, he has a gun, but who knows if it has bullets. And he has a machete, I mean, you know, like that's kind of, he, he has whatever he can find. It's kind of a scavenger in the wasteland. So, um, but this really worked. And this was one of the first things I got from Marco. And it's just amazing. It's just Jude St. Clair just summed up right there. So. Great. And I love, I love the machete. I feel like the machete yeah. is, is the everyman sword, you know, it's like yes. that's the sword that you could get at Home Depot or someplace. Mm -hmm. you know? So definitely zombie apocalypse or, you know, wasteland ready. Right, right. And again, so Lori, it, it, it how closely are you involved in the machete choreography? Yeah. yeah. Well, here's the thing is that Jude is not a martial artist. Mm -hmm. um, he's a brawler. Mm -hmm. So he has it. You're not going to see him use it too often, but he does have it kind of as a, a backup, like when he has no bullets. Um, but he's not the technical fighter in this story. There's another character that is a technical fighter who we will see a lot of fighting. Um, but He's just, a, he'll throw his fists up or he'll give up or he'll do whatever he needs to do to survive. Um, but you won't see him use the machete too often. It's most, mostly intimidation. Sure, sure. And it, it's a great silhouette for the characters. I'm always having some type of sword on the back. Uh -huh. More recognizable. It definitely sets him apart from just a standard cowboy. Right. So I love that. And uh, yep, here's your update. Launch day. Yeah, and happy launch day. Yeah, and uh, it's a great cover there. Oh, you guys, it's going to be a hundred times better when Marco colors this because it's a riot going on in the background. So where those clouds are behind you, that's probably fire smoke. Oh, nice. um, there's a Molotov cocktail flying by uh -huh. <laughs> and he's sitting on top of an ambulance. So there's going to be the light coming from the, you know, the lights on the top. Um, this is going to be amazing. And I'm, I can't wait to see what he does, but it's kind of, it's, it's tongue in cheek where he's an EMT and the world's falling apart and he's having a smoke break and having a burger. It's like, they don't need me anymore. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I quit, <laughs> you know, um, it's just, it's very funny. That's great. Yeah. I love that. This is so much in, in that image, just his, his uh, nonchalant look. Yes. Um, he's just like, ah, F it. <laughs> he's done. Yeah. He's like, we're done here. <laughs> Here's some of those interiors, like you were saying about how you can tell the story without the dialogue. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Very cool. Yeah. He's I mean, we're super fan. huge fans of like, you know, clear storytelling, you know, in comics, right? Like where you could just like right. get all the information you need. And just like, you know, the spot blacks and in, in the in the in the ambulance and and the police cruiser, like those little things, right, are, are so key. And and there's a class that you could teach just on how how those blacks lead the eye, right? right. From the ambulance to the police car to the passport, and then yep. down to that little square monitor, and then that little bit of uh, matting that the EMT standing on. And you know, this 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 image is like this big to me right now in in this whole thing. But the storytelling is just so clear. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And, and I love the fact that there's backgrounds. Like I think Patrick and I talk about it sometimes where it's like, uh, you know, we love the the image era of comic books, but there came a time where there was just like no backgrounds. There's just smoke yeah. and speed lines everywhere. And, you know, you don't know where you are. So so thank goodness for establishing shots, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Marco is sometimes I have to pull him back because I'm like, how much stuff did you put into this one scene? <laughs> like, come back, come back, Marco. We got more work to do. Because <laughs> he's like drawing like bounty pictures and dying plants and a coffee maker. And I was just like, dude. <laughs> I was like, it's great, it's beautiful, but we gotta keep going. <laughs> totally. That's great. Look at that. I love this. Now, this is an interesting story. That top panel, the gentleman that's driving the ambulance, mm -hmm. his name is Carlos. And um Marco also draws another series called Mauka, which is another apocalypse story, but in um Hawaii. 
-hmm. and there is a there is a character named Carlos that has appeared in that one and then another story that Marco so it's like this is the multiverse of Carlos he's not the main character but it's the same character that keeps showing up in all of Marco's shows so it's kind of funny that's cool, <laughs> that's cool. a little low-key uh, crossover yeah, so if people read other stuff from Marco, they're going to be like, hey, isn't that Carlos? <laughs> Soon it'll be the multidimensional adventures of Carlos. Yeah, right? exactly. It'll write itself. Mm -hmm. well, that's great. It's a bad day for Mr. Frederick Needlemeyer. Looks like it. Now, and this is really cool, too, because if you look at that page, and this will be much more clear once Marta colors it, uh -huh. but if you follow on the left, like there's a top panel, they're shocking him, they're turning the dial up to the right of that, is actually the heart monitor and that's him flatlining. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. That's so excellent. the now again, I come from screenplay writing, right? Mm -hmm. So when I wrote this, this the flatlining sound from the monitor plays this entire scene. So that's one of the challenges of taking a screenplay and turning it to a comic because now we lose the sound, right? Mm -hmm. So I was like, how can we incorporate that? You know, let's play with that visually. Um, and that's how he answered. It was just like, it's going beep. You, I know you can hear it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's that sound in your head that plays this entire scene where he's dead. That's or great. He is. I love that, that staging on the bottom, him consoling him. That's mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. I'm, I'm curious to, to learn a little bit about like your thinking, your choice to set it, to set your work in, in a world that's recognizable, right? In contrast yes. to like, you know, some fantasy world or some completely, you know, it's so post-apocalyptic, it might as well be a fantasy world. Right. You know? So I was just, because I'm looking at these scenes and seeing how well they're realized, right? Like a real world setting, ambulance, police cruisers. I'm just wondering if you could go a little into like the thinking behind that, the, the thinking behind creating yeah. your story, you know, in a world where you can have this sort of thing, this sort of imagery. So when I wrote the world, I wanted to have a real life approach of how people would react to this mm -hmm. if it were real. So it only made sense that we started it when it almost like in our own reality. So when I wrote this, it was 2018. Um, we started production in 2020. I had a couple false starts. We had other artists that, you know, there was the freaking pandemic and things crashed and burned. Um, but it made sense that it was 2020 in my head when this broke. So I wanted it, like I said, to be realistic because this is how I think people would react. And it's sometimes it's hard to take a look at ourselves as human beings and see how ugly we can be towards each other. Um, but that's the reality of it. So it makes sense for it to be placed in the real world. We're going to watch things crumble um, from where we are until we get to the wild west again definitely and i think isn't it funny like uh, you know not to go too far into it, but like post pandemic or you know post initial pandemic whatever you want to call it our view of things is different right like all of a sudden we've been through the other side of that kind of thing and even face masks i still remember when when the face masks were first going i was at a, a drive a drive through and some guy was out of my peripheral vision in martial arts we're always aware of our environment yes and I saw somebody kind of coming towards my car and they had a mask on and I forgot we were in the pandemic yeah. and I thought I was about to get jumped. I immediately kind of went on guard and, you know, like went to the pocket knife and was like ready to go. And I was like, oh, wait, this is what we're doing now. You know, yes. it's it's, oh, <laughs> it's not a weird thing, but just like this image here for this this cover. I mean, you know, that's that's not unusual necessarily. Now we can relate to that, you know, much right. more, much more. Right. And, and again, I want to remind people, I wrote this in 2018. So when yeah. you see, especially like this issue and number four, where we fall apart, mm -hmm. um, you're going to see a lot of things that are, are familiar. Yeah. And yeah. it scared the crap out of me while we were actually going through them in real life. Mm -hmm. um, my sister has read the script and she was like, Lori, <laughs> she's like, <laughs> stop writing, please. Things are happening. You know, <laughs> like, I'm not making all this happen. It's just happening. You know, oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, we're going to see something like this happening where it's like one side, they're very polarized, um, mm -hmm. no pulse, no rights. So once you die, you're done. Mm -hmm. You don't have any rights anymore. Right. And then, of course, there's the other side that we're dead outside, but we're still human inside. Mm -hmm. um, you could take away my rights. I still have feelings. So, you know, it's going to be it's going to be rough. It's going <laughs> to be hard for 
Jude and for all the people at this time, um, issue three, we cover about five years from the beginning wow. of the fall until we get to the end of issue. Yeah. Issue three, we cover five years of stuff. Wow. Um, it's, it's a rough ride. Excellent. Well, well, let's let's go over these covers. So, who did this this cover? This is this is by Angelo Angelo Aquino. Uh -huh. um, I've been watching his career for a while. We've been friends on Facebook. He actually teaches illustration in high school, so he is not a comic heavy uh, artist, mm -hmm. but does like ve um, vector art. And right. this his illustration is so I don't. It's so emotional. Yeah. And it's weird to have like a digital art have carry so much emotion and spotlight drama, but he's so good at it. So when we came around and, and I kind of like doing, I usually have about five covers. So I'll have Marco's A cover and then I'll do four variants. And I'll usually hit up two guys who are very comic related and two guys who are not. Guys, women, whomever, artists. Yeah. Okay. Um, this one is done by Everett Watkins. Um, he's a graphic designer. That's great. So he also is in comics, but he was like, do you trust me? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> he was like, I'm going to go graphic design on it. I was like, go for it. And he was like, it's going to be Big James. I'm like, I'm all here for it. Right. So, and then turned out this beautiful monstrosity. Um, <laughs> Big James is the undead bear that Jude comes across in issue one and wreaks havoc um throughout that comic he's just an unstoppable force so yeah i love that one too barney it's going to be so hard to pick it's going to be way too hard to pick man i don't know how anybody does it yeah yeah, yeah that's that is that is great uh and it looks like it must be a poster you know it's just designed so well yeah. we, got, we got a couple coming soon mm -hmm. okay. um david sanchez is an image uh cover artist Excellent. He has done covers for There's Something Killing the tr Children, um, which he just did one for Witch Hammer. He did one for w World Tree, which is an up and coming series on image. Um, William Russell will be doing a spicy cover. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so, but it's a it's an issue that we haven't talked about yet on most of the things that I'm bringing to light. So what happens to things that used to be taboo? after the apocalypse and they become less taboo yeah. or what so that's going to um it's going to elicit feelings but it's also going to make you think so that was the plan so we got yes they're both going to be awesome covers very cool and and as as we said uh, at the top of everything you know the previous issues you can catch yeah. up so here's issue one Look at this amazing cover um something that happened in issue one that we hadn't planned on it just kind of happened was a reflections. Um, Marco drew a ton of reflections. And one of the really key moments in this story is Jude stopping to pick up this glass on this cliffside road. And um, he had to like wrench it out of something. And it went flying in the air. He dove to catch it. He put his life at risk for this glass and it shatters and it wakes up the bear. So his decision to pick up that glass is kind of what sets this issue in motion. But it's like, you got Jude, you have his horse, you have a zombie, there's the bear in there, it shows his disc. So there's just like so many reflections. And Marco was saying this is very much about shattered society, mm -hmm. and how things are a mess in this world. And they very much are. That's so. great. And I love that it's, it's you know, like when you look at a lot of cool movie posters, there'll be a montage and we always see like the big head, little head, big yeah. ears. This is a really clever way to get the montage in, mm -hmm. you know, in a unique way. So I really love that. That's a, that, that you really get a lot of, essentially you have panels. You have a bunch of panels. Yes. Yeah. Cover. He sure. plays with that too. He plays with that in issue number two. You'll see it where he plays with panels and they become something else. It's really neat. That's excellent. So who's yeah. interiors of one? Again, this is in black and white. Um, we do have intentions of going back and coloring this. Um, we just got to raise some funds to do it. But when we get to, when we get through issue four, we're no longer going to produce floppies of one through four. We will produce a trade paperback. And at right. that point, everything will be in color. So yeah, here's that glass. Look what he's doing. Like what an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and then here's big James. Woo. Good luck. Well I love that name. That's a great name. Big James. 
Mm. I saw I saw in the fast food bag earlier. It said Big. Yeah, James. exactly. There's always going to be this homage to Big James on the cover. Um, he's a fan favorite at this point, even though, like, really, he's just the most terrible thing you could ever see. <laughs> People. Well, love well, well, there's a there's a current history of crazed bears. Now there uh, is on film, so you know. I think I think you know. Big James might be the selling point for the uh, the <laughs> bears are hot right now. Our issue one was out before. Issue two was done before Cocaine Bear 2. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> what, what can kill a cocaine bear? An undead bear. So there you go. Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> so is this issue two that we're looking at? Yes. This is issue two. Great Mark time. Odefellow's colors. Again, he's in the town of Santa Claus, which is a rough place. <laughs> um, there's this town drunk on a table talking about um, the man of gold who snared death and we're all stuck in the apocalypse. Well, he feasts and drinks and blah, blah, blah. Just ranting, right? And of course, this is the guy he's been searching for all this time. He's like, great. <laughs> no, no, no. Did you do the letters? Who did the letters on? The I did do the letters. Yes. I, I, I love what you did here. I, have, I don't think I've ever seen this before, where you put it and skewed it into perspective, mm -hmm. and so you can kind of, you, I kind of get the feeling of him, you know, sauntering back and forth, losing his balance because of the way that you had the perspective of the letters going back and forth. Brilliant. Yeah. Really. I, I, my hand's off to you. That's really, really clever. I've never seen that. That's Well, it's like the more riled up he gets, the crazier he is. And like the more off kilter all the words are to the point where he falls off the table. And it's like his words are like, no, I'll scramble. And it's just, oh, my <laughs> you know what I mean? Because he's drunk. He's yeah. drunk and he's the, they they goad him on. They give him drinks and then they ask him questions. So that way he does stuff this and like, you know, that's that. their form of entertainment. And <laughs> In the apocalypse. And, I, and and it almost seems like the court jester, the court jester is always the one that knows the truth, right? Nobody listens to him. Does he? I don't know. You yeah. gotta find out. <laughs> but this is the guy. So this is what I was talking about with the panels, where the cards become the panels of right. the kind. It is like this is so cool, you know? That's so clever. That's so clever. And and one thing I noticed earlier too, I love that the the panel borders. I didn't want to see it first because I thought maybe it was an unfinished page or I was missing them, but I love the the the, the panel borders are like pencil and kind of rough. It's not the standard yeah. super clean, you know, yeah. black lines. This is great. Patrick, don't we have like the coolest job? We just get to talk about comic books. I know. And <laughs> oh, I know, man. I was just speechless, literally like reading these and just like, you know, wondering like, okay, was this created in Clip Studio Paint? Because I think that there's a way that you could do that, you know, the textured border. Or did did he actually, you know, draw that arc, the flexible curve? You know, like that's that's where my head's at, you know. And then just a little choreography here is just yeah. so delightful. So this was a choreographed fight for sure. But um some of the nuances, of course, the you can't portray them in 2d so we had to pick out big moments right yeah. like him putting the hat over the dude's face and then <laughs> punching the other dude and then um one of the other challenges we had was that jude's character he would not hit a woman mm. and of course we changed one of the men to a woman so then we had to change the fight slightly to deal with this extra person that jude would not punch um so if you when you watch this or you read the fight there's a woman and she actually gets taken out by her own guys by accident. So like Jude will punch a guy and he'll like fall into the woman. You know what I mean? And she goes flying, but Jude never puts his hands on her because that wouldn't be his character. That's so cool. it was just really interesting. Marco did add the Spartan kick at the end there. I didn't write that in. But <laughs> like, it looks really cool. And I was like, I buy it. I buy it. I love, I love that, that middle panel there, how the word crack, it doesn't, it, it basically has the color scheme of the two guys. So you kind of get more of that motion. I love, you know, that's what's so great is little things like that. And when you see stuff like that in a book, you can tell people care, you know, yes. it, it, it's not enough just to, just to get by, you know, so that, that's right. Like, that's well, great. when I letter, I'm usually pulling the color scheme from the colors on the page. That's great. No, so, that makes sense. I mean, yeah. so many choices that like, Curtis, if you scroll back, like the fact that the guy, is running in front of his shout, right? Like, so basically he <laughs> shouted and then he ran forward. And so now True. he's running in front of that shout. And it was that shout that gave him away in the first place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, like all of that in one panel, just based on that lettering choice, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so, then the setup for like the actual 
well, block, punch, you know, like. Yeah. Definitely. Great we, stuff. Great stuff. It's, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we, we, we talked about that fight quite a bit because that's one of like the big things that happens in issue number two. So we spent a lot, a lot of time on there. That's yeah. great. And, and so what is now, now this is, it says it's a choose your own adventure. Yeah. So <laughs> last <laughs> campaign. Um, okay. So first campaign, when I was talking about the world, um, so many people were like, wow, this is a really cool place. You've thought of all these things. Do you have a choose your own adventure book? And I was like, no, <laughs> but that would be fun. So I wrote one. Um, this is That's a 60 cool. page manga oh. size black and white choose your own adventure book. Nice. This is a spread cover from Marco DeFillo. Um, once you, <laughs> there's an inside joke on this cover, but you have to get the book and like close <laughs> the book to see what the joke is. Um, nice. Too soon, it's too soon. I thought it was hilarious. But um, the interior is actually illustrated by another artist friend of mine named David Rodriguez. So you're gonna see stuff like this um, where it's written by me, but the, uh, keep going. Talk to Jane Doe. It's illustrated. So that's a bowl of soup she offers you with the skull floating in it. It's good. It's great. Oh my gosh. That's so like, that takes me back to those old choose your adventures. I mean, they'd have the full page runs, but they have those little vignette things. Oh my gosh. That's crazy. So we do have both. We have full page mm -hmm. illustrations. We have a lot of vignettes. Nice. Um, there's a lot of really gory deaths. Um, there's one, I think there's one path you can go where you become undead and you continue um, it's just really wild, but you get to see characters that Jude will encounter in the story later, mm -hmm. um, which I think is a lot of fun because yes. you'll know more about this character than Jude St. Clair will when he meets these people and you'll be like, oh my God, it's that guy run. But Jude has no idea what he's getting himself um, into. Right. That's so clever. <laughs> that's so clever. And then add-ons, you have, you have quite a, a variety well, of add-ons. Yeah, we made it. I mean, I Typically, people are like, hey, I like this one, but can I get this too? You know what I mean? So I made it very easy. Um, if you like a certain variant cover, but you want to add a t-shirt, you can do that. If you want to get the A cover in one of the variants, not all of them, you can do that. You can add on the Choose Your Own Adventure book, which is awesome. I highly recommend that one. Um, so we just make it very easy for you to customize your own re you know, reward level. Um, get what you want, people. That's good. Yeah. If, it's not, if it's not there send me a message. I have someone that sent me a message that was like, can I do this? And I was like, we'll make that happen. So. That's we'll great. It. Yeah. It was, I, I, when I, when I made my pledge, it was, it was great because I was able to go ahead and, you know, I, like, I think you kind of see on the side here, your selection. So I, I, first I got the, uh, the early bird, right. Cause that's always a good deal. And I, yep. I knew I was going to get the collectible sticker, but then I went back and I was able to get the digital catch up of the other three issues. So it, it, that's what's so great about the add-ons and the way you have it structured, you know, for, for people of all uh, commitment levels and, yes. you know, whether they're new to it or, or they've been along for the ride, great, right. great options. And, and this is really cool. Um, you know, Patrick and I, and you know, Patrick played around with the idea of uh, the comics foo reader, right, Patrick? Yeah. There you yeah. Go. Cause, cause Larry's doing something like that, but I'll hand it to Patrick cause Patrick had a similar idea of how to have a cool stretch goal for his first campaign. Oh, so what the comics food reader was um, like a little once, you know, once we were in stretch goal territory, right? Like the whole Kung Fu, I mean, Kung Fu and martial and comics thing was was a linchpin to it. So the idea of like, you know, offering Curtis the chance to preview Shadow Ghost, but then reach out to some of my other martial arts friends who are involved in some kind of comic type endeavor you know, right. Also like you writing and then having an artist do it or like just determined to do it all themselves, like retell the story, the origin of their Sifu's history, you know? So it's more of a, like a, a learn, like a, a comics themed uh, learning program as oh. opposed to like a story, yeah. you know? And so I reached out and just, you know, got a couple of uh, pages of each one to assemble a little extra, you know, reading material, right? Like yeah. something else on top of the graphic novel that you were backing, right? Like a little something so that, you know, if you like this, maybe you'll like what these other creators are doing, you know, mm -hmm. that's, like that's such exactly a key what thing, is. you know? Yeah. So, 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 so these are all, so uh, this is at, this is at the 5,000 level, mm -hmm. which, you know, fingers crossed and I don't doubt it very soon because you, you're, 
you're on fire right now. So <laughs> it's great. You're on fire. So so um so you know why don't you tell us a little bit about this because it says it's eight amazing PDFs. So yeah. So in my last two campaigns, I ran a stretch goal that were physical items mm -hmm. like prints and stickers and experiences stuff like that, but. Usually all the stuff that you get is like physical backers only. Mm -hmm. And when I saw someone else run this and I'm like, this is so much smarter because if you're um, a digital backer, like I have digital backers from overseas, they can't physically back. Sure. You know what I mean? But I would also like to include them in stretch goals. So this is the answer. So I know all of these writers, creators personally, um, they're amazing stories and it's a little bit of everything, but it's like kind of walking through my head. So you get like supernatural, um, like, uh, worthy chaos redemption. Her story is like a supernatural, like Buffy, a silent hill. Um, it's a lot of fun. She creates so many, um, adversaries for her two protagonists. It's insane. Like zombie mermen. What? Um, <laughs> just insane creatures so it's a fun ride and she just throws everything at you um both avalon and rays are zombie trope um they're both a little different but uh amazing amazing stories and i've known these guys since like um when i was kickstartering issue number one we became aware of each other because they were running campaigns at the same time and we were like well i'll do zombie stuff let's be friends um but their stories are amazing um, Brandon Starochi is running Avalon and he has a campaign that's coming soon in April. So nice. mother's whisper will mess you up. Um, <laughs> it's horror. My buddy, not my buddy, he's my friend, but also, um, my publisher, Chris Hayes. Uh, he's one of the CEOs of charter comics. Um, this story, he let me see one of the panels when I first came on to charter and I was just like, Oh, you're just like me. You're just as warped as me, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I didn't even put much of a description. You, this one is an experience. When you get to the end, you're going to question everything in your life because um, it will make you think. Um, Sison is the funniest comic book I have ever read. I, I don't normally read too many comedies. I'm more into like the horror or the drama. This one, I laugh out loud almost on every single page. This is Lee Newman's book and it is so funny. It's very much a superhero, but like... Um, tongue-in-cheek they laugh at themselves like it's it's hilarious um if you don't laugh from this book you don't have a sense of humor you <laughs> your life you know yeah. well you know i mean one yeah. thing what? i have to say like you know, when you're reading a lot of scary stuff right having a little bit of humor goes a long way to just reset the palate and to give people a chance for a breath and if right. you look at some of the greatest greatest novels right they, they might be super scary but there's also a little bit of of humor in there some way just to give the reader a chance to breathe. So yeah, absolutely. Great choice to have that in the mix here too. It's just such a great story. Anytime I have a chance to promote Sison, I do because it's, it's a, it's a great read. It's hilarious. And I'm a big fan of Lee Newman. So anything that he writes, I'm on board. Um, PTSD is Paul Gomez. I know you guys are familiar with him. Mm -hmm. um, we, I was like, just pick one. Cause you have so many. <laughs> <laughs> And PTSD is definitely the one, like, this is an award-winning comic. Um, it's an amazing story about uh, a veteran and the things that he sees from his trips and his PTSD and what he's going through. So it has a message behind this one as well. Nice. Um, Orphan, Blood, Orphan Bloodline and Ink are both new to me, um, but they're amazing. Like, Orphan Bloodline is, like, every single sci-fi trope you can think of where it's, like, mutants with genetically enhanced bodies and biometric additions and um <laughs> they like travel in time and they like it's 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 wild but it's definitely a great read and a wild ride and ink is like um such an original idea it's this guy who's a tattoo artist and he is charged with um protecting the realm from evil and it, it uses his it's, it's i can't even explain it you have to read it um, if you're interested, and I didn't do justice to the descriptions, if you scroll down, there's a short bio of each and every one, so you sure. know what you're getting. But I just had such a fun time, you know, getting them all together. I was like, yes, and yes, and yes, and this is so cool. So very cool. And this is this is uh, at the next level after that. Uh, five thousand. Yep. Yeah, four by six print. I love this. I call her Skull Arena. Um, <laughs> this is also the. Um, the t-shirt there's a, I usually do a black t-shirt and a white t-shirt. This is the black t-shirt. So you have a print, but, uh, 
if you choose the t-shirt, this is an option as well. This is also done by Angelo Aquino, who did the uh, the very first variant with the riot. Sure. So he does, like I said, he does great work. I love, he sent me the file and it's custom. I can custom change the colors. So he sent me the layers. Oh, nice. So he's like, hey, you want to make it pink and green? You can do that. I was just like, I love you. <laughs> That's great. That's gorgeous. It's so cool. And so, and so here's a random question, Laurie. If someone wanted to just show up and say, I want that T-shirt, could they support your campaign and just get the T-shirt? Uh, As an add-on, and it's there, but I do have a T-shirt level that comes with a comic. If you just want the T-shirt, just talk to me. I'll send you one. <laughs> <We'll work out. laughs> no, I mean, I'm just like, it's because that's just such a good design. Like, that, I'm like, oh, that could just sit in a T-shirt shop, mm -hmm. you know, in and of itself. So... Definitely. So maybe for when you have a brick and mortar, you know? Yeah, I have a website where all my merch is there so people can get all my T-shirt designs. I have a few at this point. I think I have six. So yeah, and, and and here you are for the $6,000 level, Slice and Dice. You got, you, got, you got to tell us a little bit about this. This sounds funny. But this is my face photoshopped over Danny Trejo. <laughs> I was about to say, look, look a little... <laughs> <From the study. laughs> That's great. Uh, we ran a campaign last time in October, and I was going to smash pumpkins as one of the stretch goal with a, either a sledgehammer or a machete, and people would vote. So this is kind of like that same thing where it's like I'll I'll dress up. I was thinking like Pikachu, but now that I posted this, people are like, "No, you're going full on machete," and I was like, "Do I have to?" <laughs> so now, that outfit, like. <laughs> I was like, I was thinking I was dressed up like Pikachu and do like a live cut, you know, and do oh, either like a watermelon or a cantaloupe or something just for fun. And people yeah. can, yeah, watch what it. What if you dress up like Machete and then slice up a Pikachu? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think my kids would be traumatized by that. Oh. <laughs> and here we got the pin. Yep. I have people asking me for pins. They're like, I need pins and I need stickers. I'm like, okay, then we'll put it in the stretch. Like, I have this hat. I usually have um, other people's stuff on my hat. Like I have uh, Worthy Chaos and I have, uh, this is Sam Vera's, uh, there's an alien in my toilet. So I have <laughs> uh, a couple other ones. I just haven't put them on yet. So this could be my pin hat. So it's like, I need one for myself, please. Very cool. And sticker pack. And these are images from the interior of the Choose Your Own Adventure by, um, illustrated by David Rodriguez. So there's a big James, there's a, a disc, the heart monitor that they all wear, and then the symbol of death, of course. Great. And then more to come as we see. If we get there, we'll, we'll surprise you. <laughs> I have to surprise myself. <laughs> and, and there's all these riddles. Um, yep. If you could talk, tell us a little bit about this, and this is this is kind of that world building that you were Yeah. Um, yes, thank you, Barney. So what happened is when I was world building, I wrote, I did that first. And then I decided, you know, here's the path my character takes through this world and where his decisions led him. Sometimes we don't get to see some of the other cool stuff that is built into the world. Um, so I was like, well, how else can we explore that? So, oh, see you later, Barney. Thanks for starting. Barney, always a pleasure. Let's do tea sometime. Tea. <laughs> I'm going to be on Story Comic at some point as well. He's going to squeeze me in because he was booked. That'll be awesome. I look awesome. forward to that too. Barney's awesome. So this one, if you solve it, it will actually take you to a place in the real world, a yeah. digital place uh, where other people who have solved the riddle are there. And this is where you can claim your bragging rights of um, the date that you solved the riddle. So I like this one because... If people start at the beginning and they solve this, they get into that group and then every riddle that we produce will be put into this place and you can put in your, your date that you solved the riddle and interact with the other people there. So That's excellent. Mm -hmm. this one. So Jude St. Clair is what they call a coda, a child of a deaf adult. Mm -hmm. um, so he can sign. He is not hard of hearing or deaf. He, but he can sign. And you're going to see that in issue two, three, four, and ongoing. Um, but a lot of times what he's doing is he's talking crap with his hand. So he'll look at you and be like, that's great. And then he'll do like, which means <laughs> it. so, you know, he'll, he'll spell out douchebag and stuff like that at people when, cause they don't know what he's saying. Um, so I wanted to incorporate that into this riddle. So this is a riddle written in American sign language. So first you have to translate it 
and then you have to answer the riddle and then email me your answer. And if you do that, you get a character interaction. So you will receive something in the mail from one of my characters. That is cool. Well, I, I have to admit that my younger sister has built quite a, a career just starting out as a sign language interpreter. Oh, so awesome. I would have an, an, an unfair advantage because <laughs> Right. She'd be able to translate that in a heartbeat where I'm still like, okay, I recognize an That's, N in there yeah. somewhere. You know? D, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we have these commercials and videos if you kind of go look Right. So a, I come from production. So I was like, we're doing short films. Why not? You know, um, just another way for us to explain more of the world. What I really like about these is that they're fan interactive. So if you read the story, you love the story. I always open these up for submissions. So with the world of digital technology, you can film at home and we transfer it to me or put it in a Google drive where I can grab it. Um, so I have people that I'm not in the same state and they're in the short film um, as long as they can follow the things I ask them to do. <laughs> <laughs> That's so Curtis, what do you think about hitting play on one of those? Yeah, let's, let's do that. Uh, let's, let's do this one, this one here. And there we go. There's no sound. Do you hear it? I don't hear it. I, I don't hear it either. Okay, sorry, I one wonder. second. <laughs> uh, you can't you can't hear it? No. No? Okay, let me see. Let's, well, you know, let's, maybe we'll just direct people towards it because I know we're winding, winding down here. Okay. Yeah, sometimes StreamYard's weird about like yeah. meeting tabs or something, yeah. so. But I, I do, I do recall seeing a piece of this, I think, in the, uh, in the, one of the trailers Lori put out and yeah. there was a huge surprise and um, yeah. I jumped back in my seat, so. <laughs> oh yeah, better let, let people have the full experience yes. than yes. for us exactly. to spoil it. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Well, but, but, um, but, but I yeah, do, like some kind of stunts, like we we lit things on fire in the first one, and we had a, a simulated riot and a shooting um, in a safe way. Of course, everybody was safe. Um, and then, yeah, in the second one, we did a stunt, and it's it'll take your uh, it'll grab your attention at the very end, like oh my god, did that just happen? Um, but again, <laughs> everybody is safe. I know what I'm doing, so it's not like I'm putting my life at risk. I'm gonna. <laughs> and my comic career in a fiery splash of whatever. <laughs> it's what the professionals call stage magic, right? Exactly, exactly. And then I'm currently working on the short film for number three. Um, I'm about halfway through the video editing, but it still has like color correction. And we did some drone work this time. Nice. It's um, it has a lot of potential where I'm sitting, so I'm hoping that you guys will enjoy it. It's more of a hor slow build horror. <laughs> so if you enjoy that stuff which i do um if you're feeling uncomfortable i've done it right <laughs> definitely well it's it's really exciting it i love i love your your commitment level you know to the story yeah. to the world and everything and um you know it's just i'm, I'm excited so I, I already backed it i hope everybody else backs it check it out um, thank you guys definitely definitely and and, and you know we kind of that, that kind of ran our, our full our full time oh isn't that amazing how fast it goes well, I want I wanted us to make sure we covered everything, but I, I there's so many there's so many more stories to hear about you and, and to talk about and just to geek out on martial arts, you know. I know. I think, I think, I think, <laughs> like we're gonna have to do this again. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, I didn't even get to tell you my story of being the vice president of the college kung fu club where I learned our niece, you know. Oh. But it was close yeah. enough to kung fu, but just that whole thing of weapons first ver I instead say, of open you're hand. Closer to what I do than kung fu. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, that was the gateway. You know, it was through yeah. them that I first I got my first Choi Lee Foot seminar. You know, but it's all, it's all a journey. But yeah, I mean, so many things to talk about. So definitely, we'll have to have a, a kung fu focused episode. Yes. yes. Martial art focused episode. If I'm gonna, you know. Yeah. People want to nerd out about that for it. Totally. And, and and I have to say just one on the, on the weapons based martial arts. What I love is nowadays, especially online, we live in the world of everybody saying, oh, that doesn't work or this isn't okay. practical. Whenever somebody pulls out a knife or a sword, 
people stop arguing over what's practical or what would work really fast. So, so I think it's, it's a great, as you said, a great equalizer. So it, it, well, people will still yeah. argue, trust me, I'm in those groups <laughs> where they argue over all that too, where they're like, that's a, you could just disarm it. I'm like, no, you can't. Yeah. No, you yeah. can't. It's a, you run. I would run. If someone pulls a knife on me, I'm running unless I can't run. You know what yeah. I mean? Because I know what I can do. And if they're my skill or higher, I'm, I'm in trouble. Um, yeah. So don't mess with weapons. Don't do gun disarms unless you absolutely have to. Um, you know, if you don't know if you're looking at a single action or double action gun, it's like, don't, you know, comply. Give them your wallet and live another day. Definitely. Yeah. Back, back on the Kung Fu Magazine uh, internet forums, there was a thread that was just wannabe samurais do wrong. And it was just <laughs> a collection of all the people who made, whose first choice was to grab that samurai sword off the mantle and think that they could do something <laughs> with it. And then it's just the news report of, you know, whatever happens next, you know? So it's just that, like, that's, that that dude's sword may not be as handy as he thinks it is. It I don't is. know what you're doing. Yeah, especially, uh, you know, against someone who might know better how to use a stick, you know? it's. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, most people breaking into your house aren't. <laughs> <laughs> Usually, if you're a martial artist, you're not the one breaking into houses. So yeah, you have some discipline. <laughs> it's like exactly, so, yeah. You don't know how to swing that sword, and then someone shows up with a gun. It's a bad day. Definitely, and, then, and well, very good. Well, so again, everybody, check out Path of the Pale Rider. And again, like I mentioned, if if the, you're new to the series, there's definitely a way to catch up and use the add-ons and other options. And um, I just can't wait to get my copy. So, Lori, thank you so much. The ketchup tier is literally called ketchup. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like ketchup and mustard. Ketchup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Thematically appropriate. Laurie, uh, this has been so much fun. That was yeah. thematically appropriate considering all the uh, all the red we're seeing in the, in this story, right? Yeah, we're about to. <laughs> <laughs> it's about to get messy. <laughs> Definitely. Well, what we'll do, maybe what we'll do real quick is um, we'll 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 sign off with Lori, and then Patrick, if you want to give a quick update to your backers, I'll give a quick update to my backers, and then we'll just call it. We'll wrap up the wrap up the thing. Sounds good. Sounds uh, awesome. Bye, right. everybody. Well, well, it's such a pleasure. Everyone. Definitely. We'll Talk catch you, Lori. Great to hear. Great, great work so far. Yeah. Thank definitely. You. All right. Take care. <laughs> See ya. All right. That was fun. That was awesome. That was it was good awesome. to be back in the uh, in the saddle again, yeah. so to speak, yeah. you know, Definitely. and with with a story called, you know, Path of the Pale Rider. So that that metaphor was actually not even planned, but it sounds <laughs> like it was, you know. Definitely. So 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 quick update to the backers of uh, Shadow Ghost number one. Um, essentially, all the typesetting is done and and put together. There's just a couple little items. I'm I'm organizing for our special edition. I'm uh, putting all the artwork, the concept art together, and formatting it so that it will actually work in the actual comic book format at the back of the uh, special edition. And then it's moving on to the Kung Fu Skills video portion. So I'm going to keep moving forward with that. But uh, all the covers, everything's in place and you know, making some good progress. And, and Patrick, how about for your backers? What, what do we have? Like, like I mentioned, we are uh, 75% of the surveys are done. The mo one of the most important surveys was filled, which is the monsterize yourself tier, mm -hmm. where one backer gets to become an underboss within the, the finale of A Tiger's Tale Volume 2. So why that was important was because that backer had to upload some even though I know who that person is, I want them to get an option to upload some photos so mm -hmm. that they I could draw them accurately. Uh, they went and got a haircut for the occasion, so it's it's gonna be it's gonna be fun to do that. So that's right up next on the list is to to bring that backer into the pages of a tiger's tail. In the meantime, there's still um, you know some sur surveys for another week, yeah. and then. I'll be fulfilling the digital uh, version of volume one by the end of the month, followed by the comic cards 
which I have a hard copy. Give me one second. I have to share this with you. Okay, sure. And and just a reminder to the backers of Shadow Ghost, please fill out those surveys. Still need some of you guys to fill out the surveys so I can make sure I get you your copies. And uh, you can go ahead and follow all my things on the shadowghost.com where you can also get official Shadow Ghost merchandise. And Patrick's got the cards. So these are my comic cards that I'm going to be mailing to a handful of backers so that they can keep for themselves or they can send to other people. So there are a few backers who just back the campaign at that level. And um, I want to make sure that their addresses are, are perfect because I'm going to send those cards out in April in between volumes one and two as a way to, you know, keep everyone receiving something. Excellent. Well, very good. Well, I think that's pretty much it. Just everybody make sure if you backed our, our, uh, our campaigns, get those surveys to us so we can get the stuff to you. And uh, we'll keep you updated on the next episode of the content. And check out Lori's campaign. Just hang yeah. out on that page and hit play on those videos. Definitely, definitely. Immerse yourself in that world. There's some amazing stuff. So please check it out. All right. And, and also, as always, whether or not you can back it at this time, sharing it is always a huge plus. So make sure to share and spread the word. It doesn't cost anything but two flexes of your index finger or tap of your thumb. So please do that. It's, it's a tremendous help to those of us running campaigns. Um, so that's pretty much it. I guess uh wanna call it a call it a day. Yeah. Until next time, folks, on the on the Comics Foo show. Definitely. <laughs>